Hello everyone, my name is Scott, fashion historian and curator here at the Harris. In February 2023, the Harris acquired two significant pieces for its fashion and textile collection, a yellow dress and bra worn by Claire, the alter ego of one of Britain's most celebrated contemporary artists, Grayson Perry. Grayson Perry is an internationally renowned artist who explores themes of gender, sexuality and identity in his ceramic pots and tapestries. In fact, his alter ego Claire has become one of his most famous creations. Now, Grayson Perry doesn't identify as transgender, but his attitude towards gender shows us we can choose different ways to present ourselves to the world. The Harris has links with Grayson Perry through Unpopular Culture, a touring group exhibition of paintings, sculptures and photography selected and curated by Grayson Perry from the Arts Council collection, which visited the Harris back in 2008. Claire's dress is in her signature baby doll style with a high waist and an above the knee length skirt. The slubbed yellow silk is printed with an abstract black and white pattern and applied with colourful vinyl shapes. The Peter Pan collar is made from white vinyl and is edged with a black border. Claire's bra has exaggerated cups made from polyester wadding and elastic straps. The items were purchased from an auction of Claire's dresses as part of a wider drive to increase representation within the Harris's fashion and textile collection. Grayson Perry has designed many of Claire's dresses himself. However, this dress was designed by a student at Central St Martins, a prestigious art school in London. It was designed as part of a collaborative project which started in 2005 between Grayson Perry and the second year BA fashion print students. Grayson briefs the students on how he wants Claire to look and feel from a comfort and practicality point of view. He then visits each week to track their progress. The project usually lasts around six weeks and at the end, Grayson tries on everything and awards students with a gold, silver and bronze Claire award. He also purchases many of the looks too. Now most excitingly, our dress not only shows signs of wear, but there are also makeup stains, possibly lipstick or blusher, on areas of the skirt. These are definite signs that Claire wore the dress and strengthens its provenance and increasing its cultural significance. More research is currently being done and we have reached out to both Central St Martins and Grayson Perry to find out more about these special pieces. I was attracted to this dress because of its contemporary connection with two other very famous yellow dresses already in the Harris collection. I am of course referring to Pauline's yellow dress and our Horrocks' Fashions Palazzi cocktail dress. Herbert James Gunn's Pauline in the Yellow Dress was originally exhibited at the Royal Academy in 1944 and subsequently purchased by the Harris. When the painting was unveiled in Preston the same year, queues of people surrounded the building to catch a glimpse of what was hailed as the Mona Lisa of 1944. Pauline was Gunn's partner and muse, and whilst working at Elizabeth Arden, she learned how to create glamorous and fashionable looks on a budget. This would explain one of the most striking features of this painting, Pauline's vibrant full-length yellow dress. Trimmed with black velvet, the cascading yellow fabric spills out of the foreground of the painting, a technique used by the artist to make the connection between the viewer and the muse more intimate. The dress itself caused much controversy, and its luxurious use of material, particularly in the full skirt and sleeves, caused a stir at a time when fabric was rationed because of World War II. The dress was in fact repurposed from an earlier 1930s dress, and so fitted with Pauline's love of dressing on a budget, and with the wartime make-do-and-mend mentality. Pauline's dress was presented as a gift to the Harris in 2006 by the Gunn family after it was discovered by them in their attic. Made from printed cotton and a yellow, black and white abstract design, our other yellow dress was made by Preston's own Horrocks' Fashions, launched in 1946. Dating from the 1950s, the fabric design of this stunning strapless dress with full skirt was taken from a painting by Eduardo Palozzi, an influential artist in the post-war era who worked as a painter, sculptor, printmaker and designer. 
the painting featured in an exhibition called Painting into Textiles, held in 1953 at the Institute of Contemporary Art in London. This exhibition was an important milestone in the developing concept of textile design as a credible artist medium in post-war Britain. Horrocks's fashions often bought patterns from, or commissioned famous artists to create, bespoke textiles for their dresses. This dress was purchased from an exhibition of British textile design held at the Fine Arts Society in 2003, with a grant including contributions from the V&A Purchase Grant Fund and the Friends of the Harris. The most obvious thing that connects all three dresses is the colour yellow. I was especially drawn to the colour of Claire's yellow dress because of its positive connotations and the role the colour yellow plays today in expressing gender identity. Yellow captures our attention more than any other colour. It is associated with happiness, optimism, enlightenment, creativity and sunshine, but it also has a darker side and can be confrontational and deceitful. Yellow is also the colour most often associated with deities in ancient Egyptian culture. Think of the golden glow of the Harris's Egyptian balcony. More recently, the LGBTQ plus community has used the colour yellow within the non-binary flag to represent those people whose gender exists outside the binary. This makes sense, as modern gendered colours are normally defined as pink for a girl and blue for a boy. Since yellow is neither, it can be seen as gender neutral and therefore a safe colour for people on the non-binary spectrum of gender identity. And all three dresses also connect through this concept of identity. Whether a muse, an artist or an alter ego, the identity of the wearer or creator is radically different from the next and ignites discussions over how we define ourselves. There is another link, as Grace and Perry also selected works by Eduardo Palozzi to feature in the Unpopular Culture exhibition, which was described as celebrating art from a time when we as a nation had a different sense of self. This dialogue connects perfectly with the Harris's new first floor displays opening in summer 2024, which will explore identity and what makes us look and feel good.